Well, I missed my flight to Medellin, Colombia. So here we are with another whiteboard video. And if you guys are wondering, Frank, are you working out? You're bulging out of your t-shirt. No, I haven't. I was carved out of marble in Italy before being exiled to New York. Anyway, I'll digress. Uh, so two years ago, I made a video explaining why non-ionizing radiation is harmful. And that's the typical argument given when talking about all this technology, cell phones, routers, everything we have. Oh, it's not ionizing, so it's not harmful. We are electric beings down to our atoms. Everything in our body in the world is made up of energy. And any sort of deviation from that outside of nature will cause variations in our bodies, natural electric fields, and really any modern electronic device can cause different sets of health issues. The elite know this and certainly take their own measures to protect themselves while poisoning the masses. It's safe, it's okay to use it. Putting it simply, these different electric fields disrupt calcium metabolism in cells. The energy excites the cell, causing calcium to flush into the cell, resulting in many different metabolic reactions. When this happens at high levels consistently, it can actually cause cell death, leading to degenerative diseases, especially cancer, but even more acute reactions such as heart attacks. So if you wanna know more about that, uh, you guys can check that video I made, Why Non-Ionizing Radiation is Harmful. But that's not the topic today, that's just a little intro knowing what we're talking against. If we're suffering so much from these modern devices, what are those elite doing to protect themselves? So of course there is protective clothing. I mean, I'm wearing it right now. I wear it every single day, 24 seven. I sleep in a Faraday cage, bed canopy, but celebrities and politicians are not visibly wearing protective material. And we know there are many drugs that can be prescribed as calcium channel blockers, verapamil, dilatiazem, typically to high blood pressure patients. But those drugs the masses are given have undesirable side effects. I'm guessing the elite have their own versions of calcium channel blockers that are very effective against EMF so they can function with minimal side effects. Now, this silver clothing will protect my organs but I can't exactly wear a head net looking like a beekeeper all day. You know, if I could walk around in an astronaut suit, believe me, I would, but you know, it impairs your day-to-day your -day functions. So I'm not shielding 100% of my brain. And there are different nutrients and foods that seem to help the body tolerate these unnatural levels of radiation when you do have to, you know, leave your house and look normal. First up, we have magnesium. I've done several videos on it, have a whole podcast on magnesium. So most of you are probably familiar with its role in regulating calcium. And it would make sense that magnesium can protect the body against EMF by keeping calcium where it's supposed to be. I don't think I said this earlier. If you guys are unfamiliar, EMF stands for electric and magnetic fields. It's just a general term for like devices that emit any type of radiation that is unnatural. Uh, now there are studies comparing magnesium to calcium channel blockers, those drugs. The outcome being that magnesium has a synergistic effect in working to relieve high blood pressure. Other studies have found that magnesium on its own can block calcium channels in high enough concentrations. Personally, out of everything I've taken, I think magnesium is the only real effective thing. I would say you need at least 200 to 400 milligrams. And then on top of that, an oral spray pretty frequently, depending on how high radiation the environment is. And to my understanding, the magnesium has to be in your bloodstream and it's only so effective. You know, you can't exactly fry yourself for 20 hours on an airplane and think that mega dosing magnesium will alleviate all the damage. It can only go so far. It's kind of hard to find studies on this, but there are a lot of different vitamins, especially B6, that increase the effectiveness of calcium channel blockers, as well as other amino acids such as L-arginine. But is that because 
most people are deficient in B vitamins and amino acids. Probably, you know, other B vitamins have shown these properties as well. And that's likely because every single B vitamin plays a large role in cardiovascular health. It's kind of difficult to know because the treatment of high blood pressure tends to be intertwined with calcium channel blockers in these studies. We want to know that in the context of a healthy person with no vitamin or mineral deficiencies, what can be taken to directly counter EMF? Yeah, if you're deficient in B vitamins, omega fatty acids, vitamin D, you're going to feel better when taking those or eating foods that contain those nutrients. Thing is, we want to prevent the damage from the radiation, not fix the cellular damage afterwards, although you probably have to do both. I have a B complex as well as an antioxidant support supplement that certainly help with reducing the oxidative damage on organsupplements.com. And I would say that damage is guaranteed if the EMF levels are high enough or sustained enough for a long enough period of time. But those things only apply if you're deficient in the nutrient, if your body isn't capable of producing the extra antioxidants. There are some specific nutrients in cases where like vitamin C, NAC, and acetylcysteine in excess amounts will help regardless of your nutritional status. There are a few foods worth mentioning and I've noticed when drinking water kefir, even just getting drunk off wine, I've had relief from EMF. If it's a quality organic alcohol source, otherwise it can actually make things worse by inhibiting your liver function. You know, taking shots of bourbon, not comparable to you know, a biodynamic wine. So that could be relaxed blood vessels from the alcohol, as well as gut bacteria being able to produce B vitamins for the antioxidant cycles. Alcohol also has B vitamins itself if it is high quality. Eating a decent sized meal while drinking some water kefir has always fixed my headaches without fail. Really, it's the only thing that you can genuinely do because you could take Tylenol, Motrin, Aleve, whatever it is, you need a high quality meal to push you know, the toxins, relieve your liver, and give yourself the nutrients and feed the gut microbiome. Coffee is one of those weird ones where it might make some people feel better temporarily, but without it, you will be worse off than the average non-coffee drinker. I don't think the magnesium content in coffee is significant enough, but the caffeine can relax your blood vessels. Problem is, if your adrenals are shot, your blood pressure might increase. Chocolate seems like a safer bet than coffee, has a much higher magnesium content, and contains calories for sustained energy. The caffeine release would also be a bit slower and less stressful on the adrenals compared to the coffee. And you do have some sugar that might be feeding your gut microbiome and, and those bacteria might be helping you deal with the high EMF environment by producing nutrients and, and detoxing. However, with the high fat content of chocolate, uh, you might be causing bile to be released from the liver and then that's gonna be reabsorbed unless you eat something quickly afterwards that has a more starch, more carbs, more fiber to increase the gut motility. The problem here is getting the right combination of foods and nutrients without overdoing it, as balance is necessary to not stress your liver too much. Magnesium taken with vitamin C is a pretty safe start. Vitamin C increases magnesium utilization and, and those two nutrients aren't too hard on the liver. The more stuff you put in your body, whether good or bad, the more your liver has to process. And if your liver is dealing with the oxidative damage from EMF radiation because you know, your liver is what's physically producing the antioxidants, glutathione, you don't want to burden it with too much of anything, even a vitamin, B vitamins, whatever it is. So I usually take magnesium and vitamin C in the morning. Uh, then with my meal, I might take like vitamin B1 or folate or B complex, but for the most part, I just drink water kefir. So, you know, you can try to isolate different B vitamins and experiment to see which ones make you feel better. And beyond that, you want a hair mineral analysis every few months to make sure you're not depleting any other minerals. We did a video on the hair mineral analysis and uh, we got plenty of information on my channel, guys. If you want to just learn more about health in general, uh, if you want the uh, quick 
solution. If you're having health problems, you can reach out to me on frank-stefano.com for a consultation where you can also see all of my businesses. Uh, we have, of course, Wi-Fi shielding.com where we have some new products and, of course, the shielding clothing. That's very important. The most effective thing you can do, guys, is just wear shielding clothing. OrganSupplements.com, we have different types of magnesium and other supplements that will help you alleviate the oxidative damage from EMF radiation. And on FrankieStrangeFoods.com, we do have water kefir available. But guys, just check out frank We have a lot of interesting products, new stuff coming soon for pretty much every business. I didn't listen to my own advice. Uh, I went to an event on Sunday in the city. I thought I was just going to be down there for like an hour or two. It was going to be nothing crazy. So I just took some magnesium and vitamin C in the morning, and I didn't stay hydrated. Ended up being down there for seven hours straight in like the highest EMF environment I've been in for years and years and years. My br I felt scrambled, you know, my brain. I couldn't think. I was wearing full protective clothing on my body, but I regretted not wearing a hat and a mask. I would have probably felt a lot better. Uh, so what I would have done differently there is I would have forced myself to stay hydrated. I would have brought some water with me, and I would have had a meal, especially something with like white rice, water kefir, some starch, to keep me going throughout the day. So depending on what type of environment you're going to be in, you know, that can kind of gauge how locked in you have to be with this and how strict you have to be with your routine because some days you can get away with being in a high radiation environment for a short period of time with no issues other days you want to make sure you're on top of your nutrition uh, so thank you guys for joining me if you could please drop a like on the video leave a comment down below subscribe so that youtube can unsubscribe you next week and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos maybe i'll end up in uh Columbia on a beach somewhere nice before I uh, jump off the Brooklyn Bridge. We'll see.